Okay, we're back for part two, folks. And I was discussing the probe and the fact that it's a brass channel encasing the actual sensor. Now this has begun to get scratched. I haven't been using this meter that long. So if you're concerned that over time that surface will wear down enough to affect your readings, there is a fairly simple solution for that. So let's take a micrometer. This is a tense micrometer. On the side there are on the back there's graduations here and numbered. So if we look at the thickness it is just under 123 thousandths. We've got 122 and we'll see which lines line up in the end here. It's 0.1228. So we've got an exact thickness of the probe. And I have a roll of this 1,000 thick stainless steel shim stock. It's very hard and smooth. So if we sand this down a thousandth of an inch, we'll actually go an extra maybe two or three ten thousandths to allow for a small film of glue. Sand it down, then this will have a nice surface to glue. Scratch up one side of the stainless shim stock and just glue it on there. This is difficult to bond, so you want to make sure that you do scratch the surface, clean it off with alcohol or acetone, which is nail polish remover. Make sure it's absolutely clean. Do not touch it before you glue it, because there is oil in your skin. Glue that on, and the probe will last forever. I have a roll of this. Anybody that like, would like to do this on their meter, next time you order, let me know. I'll just give you a small piece of the shim stock. Not a problem. So, I think we've shown that there's really no magic to using a gauss meter, despite what anyone out there might tell you. I've been using them in Hopra events for many years, as long as I've been going to them. And I like it because I welcome people checking my magnets and recording the readings. It's certainly useful to make sure that you don't have something that's substantially stronger than what other people can buy. And their results, their recordings, which they typically put right on the tech sheets, uh, bear that out. You can check with anyone. Anyone that's teched my cars, and they'll tell you there's nothing special about the magnets in them. Other people have run my cars. I've loaned them out on a number of occasions. So, why would someone object to using a gauss meter? I, my feeling, and a lot of people feel, that if you have nothing to hide, there should be absolutely no problem with it. We've shown there's no magic here. It's a useful tool. It's a valuable instrument for measuring magnet strength. So, if you have nothing to hide, there should be no problem at all. What else can we say? This myth that 57 different reasons why you can't suddenly use a gauss meter is uh, frankly just absurd. If you can use a voltmeter, a multimeter, you can use a gauss meter. I'll show you, we'll turn it back on. One gauss. Let's take that same Tycho Traction magnet we had a few minutes ago.
So as you can see, as I said, just slide it to get the highest reading. Turn it around, do the same thing. There we go. That'd be a pretty good reference magnet. You could have more than one. You could also take a that was on the I should have had it on the higher scale. Let's do that one more time. Have it on the right scale. Take a couple of readings, record them. Be a good idea to have more than one magnet. I'll go use the other scale. Let's try the flat side of this magnet. So that's about just under 2100 gas, about 2090. And just keep those in a place where you can find them. And as I said, at any, any point in time, you can double check, make sure the calibration has not changed. I haven't found it to do so. I found it to be extremely consistent. So that's basically it in a nutshell. Unless you're wondering what this picture here is. This is from the 96 Euphor Nats at Zeppelin Hobbies in New Jersey. My son Roger here just got out of the Army. And uh, we, had, we had fun in that race. I took first, he was second. Victor Feliciano was third. Harvey Goodwin fourth. Mike McCullough fifth. Harvey Goodwin sixth. It was all cheetahs. For some strange reason, uh, Mr. Wizard suddenly withdrew all of his unlimited entries at the last minute. Rather odd to do something like that at your own race. Anyway, we enjoyed it, so we'll see you next time.